Welcome to GRE Snacks, snackable episodes about the GRE exam and graduate school admissions. I'm Tyler, founder of Achievable, and Achievable has an affordable $199 online GRE course that includes everything you need to ace your GRE exam. A full textbook, tons of GRE questions that are backed by our memory enhancing algorithm, and full length practice exams. You can try it out for free at achievable.me, and if you like it, the code podcast will get you 10% off at checkout. Well, let's get started. So we have Charles Bibelos again with us on the show. Always love having you here, Charles. And if you could just give a quick background for people who may not have heard one of your episodes in the past yet, uh, that would be great. Yeah, thanks for having me back again, Tyler. So my name is Charles Bibelos. I run a little company called GMAT Ninja that is a little bit misnamed because we also do GRE and LSAT. And uh, that's part of where we, what we want to talk about today is since we, we um, help a lot of students choose which test to take. Um, now that the GRE has been trying to gain currency and all sorts of admissions, got a lot to say about when that's the best choice and when it's not the best choice. Yeah. And we've uh, we've talked about GRE versus GMAT for business school and how the GRE really is sort of a full class like equivalent option now. Um, and it's interesting because, you know, the LSAT with frankly, just with like law school being a little different than the rest of graduate school, having different material, et cetera. Um, it's it's cool to see that the GRE is actually expanding pretty well in the LSAT as well. So I don't know if you let's start by first talking about kind of like the state of play, like where things are with the two exams, but um, in, in regards to law school admissions, and then we can go on kind of like you know which which exam contains which material and which things, and then uh, which one you should consider taking. Sounds good. So a little bit of history first. So LSAT. Um, has just been the gold standard for law admissions, and it's been a huge, huge part of law school admissions. I could argue that for a lot of other kind of graduate programs, whatever test you're going to take, GMAT, GRE, is is often a, a fairly small part of the picture of whether you get in. LSAT has historically been dominant for law school admissions. Two-thirds or so mm-hmm. of, of um, your application is evaluated based on your LSAT score. It's a really, really big deal. So in 2016, for the first time, law schools slowly, or some law schools, I should say, started accepting the GRE as an alternative. Mm-hmm. Um, so at this point, so we're recording this in 2022, towards the end of the year, so a little bit more than half of ABA-accredited law schools now accept the GRE as an alternative. And interestingly, only about 2% of students who are admitted to law schools took the GRE, and 98% still take the LSAT. So GRE right. is starting to gain. It's an option in a lot of schools. It's an option at some really good schools, including Harvard now, fairly recent announcement. But the the use of the GRE is still pretty limited by applicants. Yeah. And I think that it's, it is it is worth mentioning um, that this is kind of how things, the ball started to get rolling with, with MBA programs. Um, it, it started with, you know, people will accept it. And then it started with, well, people will try it. <laughs> and then it kind of became like a much bigger deal. Like, you know, we have a blog post on GMAT versus GRE and did some research for it um, and, you know, pulled from po- poets and quants. But there are business schools now uh, like Washington Olin that have 71 percent of their students applied with a GRE in 2020 versus a GMAT, which is pretty incredible. And so it's it it, it is a um, it is like a, a trend that we're going to be keeping an eye on. Uh, but right now, like you said, 98 to 2, <laughs> it's still very LSAT dominant. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it's interesting for the, you know, the MBA world. I've spoken to admissions um, directors at, at some some top 10, top 20 programs who said that they, they're kind of getting to the point where they almost prefer the GRE. Mm-hmm. And the question is, will the same thing happen with law schools? And there's reason to think that the answer is maybe not, because I, I, right. I would probably make the case that GMAT and the GRE are similar enough broadly in the skills they test and separated enough from what you actually do in business school that they're not right. super strong predictors of how you're going to do in business school. So, okay, the tests are, are probably equally predictive. That's what the data pretty much tells us. Okay, so schools have kind of said you can take either one. We don't care. The question is, are law schools going to get to that same point with the GRE? Mm-hmm. And so my wife is a, is a former attorney. Um, so caveat emptor folks, um, she did not love being an attorney. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> when she was, when she was applying to law school, she hated the LSAT, um, as, as mm-hmm. many applicants do. She, she doesn't love standardized tests, even though she married a guy that teaches them for a living. And 
when she got to law school, I remember her uh, maybe a month in, she said, oh, wow, this feels so much like the LSAT in some ways. The LSAT mm-hmm. was a really great predictor. And the things that she struggled on with the LSAT, mostly reading speed in her case, those were the exact right. same things that she struggled on in law school. And she had this whole rant about it about four weeks in where she's like, yeah, the LSAT was trying to tell me something that I'm really good at, at, at the logic. My reading precision is pretty good. But when you put me under the time pressure and say, I've got to read a ton of stuff in a short period of time, I struggle. I'm not a fast reader. I was pretty good on the LSAT, got a pretty good score. I'm pretty good in law school. I'm doing all right. I'm getting pretty good grades, but I'm struggling with the exact same thing. So she felt, again, anecdotal. She, a lot of the other lawyers I know, uh, felt like the LSAT really kind of gave them a, a hint as to what law school was like. And it's predictive validity, which is a fancy way of saying um, when law schools run their data and say, okay, how much did did students' law um, LSAT scores predict their performance in law school? Yeah, the LSAT right. has historically been highly predictive. And you could say, well, if you really believe all of that, that the LSAT is this wonderfully crafted exam that's crafted perfectly for law school specifically, and nothing else can compare. Do I believe that to be true? I'm not sure. But what may end up evolving here is that if, if that really is the case and the data supports that over time, the GRE might be something that never gains that much traction. Maybe it's a minor alternative. Some schools are okay with it for some applicants. But it may well be the case that because the GRE and the LSAT are so different, that it may never be that predictive and it may never become that common in admissions. But I do think it's telling that the, the trend line is very much towards law schools saying, hey, if the LSAT doesn't work for you, try the GRE. And if we like you enough, we'll consider it. Yeah, I think that I think that that trend is coming from a place of um, schools are trying to give people more options, and I do think schools are trying to one feel accessible, right? And if you're, you know, if you're kind of coming from a place where maybe you don't, you weren't raised in a household with an attorney, right? Uh, my mom is actually an attorney, um, not practicing, but she still has her degree active, and. Um, you know, that means that we got like the economist when I was a kid and like other stuff like that. Right. Like, so it's like you, you kind of start to get into that language and and digesting it. And if that's maybe something that you didn't grow up with or didn't have that opportunity for, it's just harder for you for whatever reason. um, Then the GRE is a much more accessible test. Right. And you still could be potentially a very good lawyer someday, you know, and then the flip side of that is like you said, um, the LSAT, is pretty comparable to what you're going to do. So if you don't like or, or are not skilled at what you're going to do in law school, that's, that's, that's a little concerning, right? So it's a, it's a little bit of, I think it's like the schools are trying to be accessible. And I think that's a good thing for sure. I almost wonder if the GRE might have to release like a subject test on law or something like that to really kind of round it out. Yeah, I, I, well, I think the challenge for law schools right now is how exactly do you interpret GRE scores? You're not doing math right. as a lawyer, typically. Um, you're certainly not doing any math at all in law school. And you go and take this GRE thing and and you're doing as much quant as you are verbal. So how do you even interpret right. that, right? So you, you certainly have some funny stuff there. Um, for what it's worth, I, I am wholeheartedly in favor of graduate programs of all types. Law schools certainly are, are among the last holdouts giving applicants more ways to apply, more ways to prove that they're academically prepared to do well. And I think it's wonderful. I, w- I wish all law schools would be open to the GRE. I hope that day comes. And I'm not saying that as a mm-hmm. as a GRE tutor. We tutor LSAT as well. I'm mm-hmm. saying that because, yeah, people have different skill sets, different comfort levels with, with exams that are structured in different ways. And I think having more options for how to show that you're ready for grad school, I just think that's a good thing. So I think that the trend is wonderful. The question is, well, how much traction can the GRE possibly gain? It, it could hit the point, and I expect it to at some point, where 100% of law schools accept the GRE or nearly 100%. That, that's what I expect to be the case, let's say, five years from now. How seriously will they take it is the question. And I don't know yeah. the answer to that. I think that's much, much trickier. And you know, somebody that tutors both exams... I, I think the biggest difference, really, we, we can talk about the different sections on the two tests, and, and I don't think that's necessarily all that exciting to talk about. That's easy stuff to Google. Mm-hmm. But if I was going to argue, what are the skill differences, really? So what right. is it that's going to cause you to do better on one exam than the other? 
the LSAT very explicitly tests reading speed. You do 25 reading plus... Reading speed, okay. Reading speed um, and processing speed in general. So it's it's not totally comparable because the, que- the a, a typical question might take you longer, all else being equal on the LSAT than on the GRE. But you have 25 questions, 35 minutes on each of your three LSAT sections. Mm-hmm. And to be able to get through those 25 questions comfortably in 35 minutes, you have to be a blazingly fast reader, okay. an unusually fast reader. So my wife, for example, went to law school on full scholarship, graduated near the top of her class, hated being a lawyer in the end, but she was a good law school student and she could not get through 25 questions in 35 minutes. She still can't to this day, even after law school and becoming a better, stronger, more aggressive reader, she still struggled right. because it tests at reading speed that aggressively. The GRE doesn't. I mean, that, that makes you wonder if that's kind of a false, like, I mean, it certainly sounds like the LSAT's talking about stuff that's more indicative of the type of works and type of questions you're going to be getting, right? Like you're going to, you know, it's not just like reading comprehension and vocab in kind of a bubble. It's, you know, related to law. But if you don't need super fast reading speed to be a great lawyer, is that really is it really great that that's what is testing so hard? I don't know. Yeah, and and we can get we can ask that question. How important is it to be a fast reader to be a good law student or a good lawyer? I I think it matters in one sense. So what I saw out of um, out of my wife is that yeah, she probably spent more hours studying, all else being equal, than a lot of her classmates who are just naturally faster readers. She mm-hmm. was good at the type of thinking. She was good at the type of processing and writing she had to do, but she was a little bit slow at it compared to most lawyers. So she had to put in more hours as a law school student. Was it part of why she didn't love being a lawyer? Maybe. So does it matter? Yeah. And and the people that I know that loved law school, thinking of a couple of my friends in particular, blazingly fast readers. Um, and mm-hmm. I and I so I think there's a correlation there. What I have a problem with is that if you're Again, by law school standards or by LSAT standards, if you're a slow reader, you're effectively kept out of the top 10 or top 15 law schools. My wife did not go to Mm. a top 15 law school. And how fair is that? You might be an incredible legal mind and you're somebody who compared to humanity in general, you're an above average reader in terms of your speed. You might be off the charts in terms of precision, above average, but not blazing in terms of speed. And you're going to have a heck of a time crossing that 170 threshold on the LSAT that you need for a top top program. And that always struck me as a little bit unfair because you might be super motivated. You might be willing to put in the extra work. If your homework's a little bit slower in law school, your reading's a little bit slower, but you're willing to put in the time and you're otherwise a wonderful thinker, a wonderful, precise reader, great potential legal mind motivated. You're kept out of the top law schools. That always struck me as unfair. And that's where I think that the GRE offers a really good opportunity if your primary barrier on the LSAT is reading speed, you, you probably have a really good shot at taking the GRE, which is much less time pressured, crush mm-hmm. the verbal, go show that right. to law schools. And if you're otherwise a compelling candidate, if there's other things in your profile that make you really appealing, they're going to give you a shot now, or at least 50 some percent of law schools right now will give you a shot. And that strikes me as fair. Is that going to work for the vast majority of applicants? Maybe not. If you are a fast reader, you should probably stick with the LSAT, at least for now. Mm-hmm. But it strikes me as supremely fair if you're kind of that edge case where maybe you need 40 minutes to get through a 35-minute LSAT section comfortably. Maybe the GRE is for you. And if you can absolutely crush that verbal, somebody should give you a chance if you're really motivated to go to law school. Yeah, I think if you had a 90th percentile or above GRE verbal score, that definitely shows that you can handle probably anything that's going to be in law school. That's my unscientific opinion. Not as a law school admissions officer. Yeah, and I, and broadly, I would agree with that. I don't know where the threshold is, but um, I, I wouldn't necessarily even argue that the level of reading on the LSAT is that much harder than the GRE. I think if you can really right. nail GRE verbal 90th, 95th percentile, something like that, I think you're showing that you're going to be able to power your way through legal language if you choose to, if you're motivated to do that. And I think that's fair. I, I think it can feel weird to take the GRE for law school admissions because what are you doing with this quant thing? And do law right. schools care? And I think law schools are still figuring out if they care. So the the handful of studies that are out there have suggested that there is some correlation between your quant performance and your performance in law school, that, that there is some predictive validity to 
mm. the quant section, it's a lot lower than for verbal, but there's there's some predictive validity of it, meaning that it, it indicates something about your um, how well you're going to do in, in law school or how well you would do on the LSAT. So there's something interesting there that I think law schools are going to have to figure out over time. Um, and I think it feels awfully strained as a test taker. So how much how much are you going to do on quant? If you're great at quant, great. Then take the GRE and dazzle them with a great quant score too. You might as well. But I think for most people thinking about law school, odds are decent that you don't love the quant. How much did you study for it? And and that right now, we have no answer to it at all. Mm-hmm. And and I, I wouldn't know really what to tell a, a test taker who's trying to go to law school and take the GRE. I'd kind of say, well, where are your skills? Can we get you above a nice round number? Can we do something here that maybe psychologically for the law school makes them go, oh, really smart applicant. They got a 160 on quant. But what does it really right. mean? Nobody knows. Yeah, I, I think that it's we're still in the figuring out phase, but this is an interesting topic and we, it is kind of like a new trend that we're, I don't know, in my opinion, hopefully going to see more of as we kind of get the, I think just giving people more options is broadly a good thing. Agreed, Tyler. I hope so too. And, um, you know, I, I expect that somebody listening to this podcast in, let's say, 2024, who has current data is going to say, what are those guys saying? 50% of law schools, it's 90% now. I think the day is going to come where it becomes a lot more widely accepted. I just don't know how widely, but I hope it becomes mainstreamed as an option that law schools are willing to look at precisely because for folks that struggle with reading speed, they're going to do so much better on the GRE. And that gives them a fair shake that I think a lot of those applicants deserve. Yeah, totally agree. Thanks, Charles. This has been GRE Snacks, hosted by Tyler from Achievable with Charles Bibelos from GMAT Ninja. Achievable has a great online GRE course that you can try for free at Achievable.me. And if you like it, use the code podcast to get 10% off at checkout.